part of the conversation? Then let us know on the TNT Interactive live chat room at TNT.news. Lighting the fuse for freedom. Today's news talk, TNT. Wait, my computer's... Welcome back. And I'll have to tell you, I'm pretty outraged by what we were hearing there from... uh, Simon Forthrop about the ultra low emission zone, another restriction on our freedom. Well, one freedom fighter, Crusader, in a classic sense of the word, um, fighting for freedom for all of us, is Tim Scott, head of the Freedom Association, who joins us now. Tim, sorry to break, no doubt, your wonderful free thinking weekend by bringing you back to the grim realities of the UK. Uh, Oh, dear. um, We haven't really had the greatest um, few days in terms of free speech. Uh, Brazil yeah. um, shuts down Elon Musk's uh, X Twitter mm-hmm. thing. It's a kind of a shockwave yeah. hitting the platform. But it's not the only issue, really, at the moment. It's a high-stakes showdown between big tech and government power, it seems to me, something which we sort of seen in the UK as well. Now, I'm wondering, Tim, with this yeah. and also the attack on the Telegram CEO, do you think there's a concerted effort in Brazil, in the United Kingdom, in France, to actually try to get control using national sovereignty as an excuse of the relatively free world of social media. Yes, I, I think so, Len, but good morning. Yes, it's all very worrying, isn't it? Uh, you know, we've just heard about the ULES, which in my book stands for Unfair Legalised Extortion Zone. Uh, <laughs> and, and, you know, now we go on to social media, and, and I think governments around the world are actually panicking. Uh, look at the... Uh, elections that they've just had in Germany. Uh, yeah. The governing party, the Social Democrats, got uh, 6 and 7% uh, in, in two of the, uh, the German regions. I think governments around the world are under pressure. Uh, I think populism is becoming rather popular. And yeah, I think yeah, that yeah, they're yeah, worried yeah. They're, they're, that they're losing the narrative then. But I, I think um, uh, in mm. Brazil, apparently, if you go on Twitter X in Brazil, you're threatened with a fine of ten thousand dollars a day or something what? ridiculous. I'm not sure. Yes, That's I mean that could be. Uh, you know, if you quickly check your uh, Twitter account for a minute, I'm not sure how many dollars that could be, but uh, even even that could cost you twenty dollars or something ridiculous. Um, ridiculous. Now, Elon Musk is saying um, he's he's promising or threatening to give everybody in Brazil free access to his Starlink. Um, yeah internet access so that so that they can they can sort of access the X on the quiet yeah. but uh, yeah it's 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 on pressure on not just on both sides of the pond then but uh, all over the place and is this the battle royale i previously predicted would occur as the the general public driven social media come into direct contact with the dead hand of an establishment, which increasingly looks threadbare and collectively attempting to shut us down. In other words, as many of the people on our chatterbox say, uh, the World Edu- uh, World Economic Forum-led uh, and United Nations-led authoritarian one world. Well, yes, ap- uh, apparently, Len, it will own nothing and we'll all be happy. Um, uh, according to uh, according to Davos Man at uh, the World yeah. Economic Forum, yeah. I mean they yeah. don't luck it up on them. But uh, you know, <laughs> governments are panicking. They're losing the narrative. They're getting scared. Um, uh, people that they and and they're looking to silence and shut down people that they don't like. Yeah. Uh, you know, this is the problem. I I think um, you know social media, then, but it's been very liberating. It, it's lowered the barriers to entry. Uh, you know, anybody can now come on and say their bit, which they couldn't in the past. And I think established governments, they are facing quite literally, you know, a peasant's revolt. I don't mean that in a derogatory way, because uh, I'm a bit of a revolting present, peasant myself. <laughs> 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 no, no, surely not. Uh, I am. Um, I am. You're, you're lucky I'm not wielding a pitchfork as we speak. Well, that, now you're threatening. That's probably hate speech. Hate well, speech um, comparable yes, I, to I, Lauren I, Edwards, MP, who will be getting a rather scary yes. phone call from me today. Yeah. Uh, there yeah. you go. Yeah. Yeah, it's um, this nebulous com- concept of hate speech. I mean, what, is, what does that mean? You know, one man's hate or one person's hate is another person's 
a reasonably good point. And, you know, today yeah. we have hate speech. Tomorrow we'll have hate facts. Well, it is. I mean, we're pretty close to George Orwell's point. An oft comment, oft quoted comment here on today's news talk is in, yeah. uh, in the chatterbox, particularly uh, that uh, we were meant to regard 1984 as a warning, not a handbook. And it seems yes. to be the other way now. Yeah. It's the other way. Yes. Um, yeah. Yeah. Uh, it's and basically, very Craig Abbas says Brazil is captured until the people rise up. Uh, there's a lot of feeling in the chatterbox by getting control of the narrative. What they mean is nobody can challenge their lies. Adds Craig Abbas. There's a lot of very great frustration. If I'm just looking through in the in the chat here, uh, <clears throat> but now with modern technology. Yeah. These states do have the upper hand because they can try and charge you ten thousand pounds or whatever it is. The problem they've got though is if they push it too far, there'll be a collective uprising. And in my judgment, that happens very quickly. Uh, yeah. If you suddenly pass a threshold of authoritarianism, the public say we've got nothing to lose now. This isn't right, and they'll fight back. But are we are we anywhere close to that threshold? And do you risk being put in prison for inciting? the inevitable uh, civil war that Elon Musk was talking about by answering my oh, question. Dear. Yeah, I mean, yes, he did say that, didn't he, about the UK, that we're on the brink mm. of civil war. I, uh, I mean, I don't think we are. I mean, I like I like Musk. He's a, he's a pioneer. He's an inventor. Um, you know, rockets that can re-land and be reused and all this sort of good stuff. And, and, and he's got some great ideas about, you know, life on Mars and all that sort of mm. thing. Um I'm not quite sure how much, much as I love the guy, I'm not quite sure how well he knows the UK. I wish he'd come and pay us a visit. You know, I'd fork out a few quid, um, you know, uh, uh, not as much as an Oasis ticket, but uh, <laughs> I'd, I'd fork, I'd, you know, what, what, 350 quid, Lembit, for us for, for standing. Oh, dear. Um, but, uh, yeah, I'd go and see him if he came over here and, you know, spoke at the Albert Hall or whatever, I'd go and see the guy. No, I mean, it is, it's very worrying, Lim, but the direction of travel is clear. It's, we're living in an increasingly authoritarian world. Uh, the Conservatives didn't stand up to it sufficiently. Uh, Labour have made it very clear with this rather sneaky announcement um, only a day or two before Parliament rose that they're not going to implement the University's Free Speech Act, which was the only concrete pro-free speech measure that uh, we had in 14 years of a Conservative Prime Minister. That's my concern, that we've got a situation now where after being offered change, all the change is worse. And if it were possible, we've actually got a worse, more authoritarian government now, we clearly do, than the one that that yes. stumbled into obscurity and, and electoral failure on in, in in july how far do you think labor is willing to go to shut us down and bear in mind of course Keir Starmer has got phenomenally negative approval ratings that already yes yes there's there's no pm who, who whose opinion polls opinion ratings have crashed as much as Starmer's. Uh, i mean he was in negative territory even before the election started <clears throat> and and it's now even worse. Um, I do think that the, sadly, I think the government here at least, Lembit, and, and I suspect elsewhere, they're pushing at an open door. I'm afraid that uh, I worry that COVID and the lockdowns have prepared us, softened us up for more authoritarian, more big bossy authoritarian yeah. government. You know, people are, re when people are scared, nervous worried which quite rightly people were when covid was on uh, it's much easier to sort of herd them in the direction that you want them to go it's much easier to sort of bully people tell them what to do give them the what is it the smack of firm government uh when people are anxious and scared uh, which you know people understandably were understandably were during covid so sadly i think um they're pushing at a bit of an open door here, Lembit. I can't probably speak for other countries. But in the case of the UK, sadly, I think they are. Yeah, Craig Abbas says we may not have civil war, but we do have civil unrest in the UK. The government are dealing with it by locking people up. I totally agree. And you can't legislate against human emotions, says Red. Thank you so much. That is Tim Scott.
uh, from the Freedom Association. Coming up next, we've got Tom Sullivan, a free thinking individual and political commentator who's going to go through some of the stories making the headlines, including what happened in Germany over the weekend. All of that with me, Lemon Topic on TNT. See you in a moment. Well, sir.